If you landed here, chances are you're checking out maybe for the first time or just want a refresher to see what CSS Flexbox is all about. Maybe you've heard of Flexbox and its qualities in CSS and how it basically is a box that flexes. And outside of that, there's a lot more to it, um, but the general consensus is it allows you to make expandable content in a web page. Gone are the days not necessarily gone, but they used to use floats. And in our case, floats would be breaking content outside of um, traditional block level elements on a page. And you'd have to do all these hacks before Flexbox existed. So Flexbox is kind of this great new way to essentially build great layouts, at least in, in the interim until CS Grid was introduced. But the real powerhouse is combining both Flexbox and CSS Grid. So I'll be adding some more grid content coming up, but this is just a refresher or a you know introduction to what CSS Flexbox is and how you can use it in your CSS if you're creating a website. So a lot of frameworks might already have this baked in. You add a class to some element and it's just kind of done for you. Um, if you want to roll it your own, you'd have to write, of course, custom CSS. So to do that, um, of course, you enter the realm of writing a CSS file, and then you've got these class names like I have here with some properties and values to kind of adjust to what you need based on maybe a design you have or some idea you're trying to build. Here, I've just got some block level elements. There's three divs inside a container class, and each div's got its own unique class. They have their own unique color too, just to demonstrate the difference between the three. And what I want to show you here is just how Flexbox essentially works from the, the start. So if I were to say uh, display flex, we should already get this to happen. And what that does is essentially just flexes these things in a axis that is on the X axis um, that's called the flex direction in this case. So the directions in this case will be row. Um, if we wanted to change that, you could say flex direction and column would be the other one you could use. So the default's always gonna be row when you just display flex without this classification here. So if we were to remove this, it'll go back to um, this look and feel automatically. So with that out of the way, you can think of Flexbox with two, two main axes. So that row construct that I just mentioned, so that would be horizontal, and then column, which is the vertical. You can kind of contour it any which way based on what you need. Um, but the crucial thing here is just the flex. You may see here, it's like, well, I want that to span full width. Um, and you can do something like that to where the items inside the flex um, kind of do their own behaviors. It would be justify content. This allows you to change the things inside the Flexbox container. And in this case, we could say maybe center and center those items. So you can kind of contort where they actually live. And for brevity here, why don't I add a border to this container um, and just show you kind of the, the containing element itself. So we'll just say solid mm, aqua or something. Let's do this one, it's fancier. So there's our, our containing element. You see it, it's 800 pixels wide based on this property here. I can make that as wide as I want, but this allows that stuff in between to kind of do its thing. Um, and then say we don't have our, our text in here as kind of offset maybe, and we can add some text to this div. And it doesn't look great, so it's not centered in that case. So we could say align items and center in that way. And that stuff should shift to the center, as you can see in this case. So these kind of have some default padding on them that kind of make them look funky, but you can see that all the content itself is shifting to the center as it should. So I'll remove the text for now. So maybe I want the stuff to not be in the center. Um, we can go about that just by saying um, flex end here and should shift to the right. So you can kind of contort things to, to go to certain spots within that base container. So flex start is all the same, but it shifts to the left. So you might have you know some content or something you want to fixate on the left and then have one on the right and do those things accordingly. Now you can go one step further here and say flex one on the first div and notice how it spans the full width. So one kind of just stands for take the full width of the container based on what's left over. 
Um, so these two kind of have their own width that's base, basic. And then this one just spans that full width based on what's remaining um, outside of their own width. So as you can see, it, it gets pretty deep in detail how this stuff works in the end. Um, but this is kind of just a, a precursor to all the stuff we could go through in the in the future. So justify between in this case, we'll kind of do the, a similar thing. If we take flex one off this property, they should kind of just span this should be, we'll try a space between here. And they should shift between each other. So now there's like this equal width um, between the three. And if we wanted to get funky here, we could say width like, and just take up the full spat, uh, space and say it was a third is 33%. So kind of the equal width of a hundred there. You should have that kind of um, look and feel that would probably be after on a typical web page, like a three column layout. Aligning the text center could just happen by saying text align center, typical property there. I didn't have to go crazy with Flexbox to get something super aligned there. Um, but this is typically the space, or at least the three key ones I often use, I think the most, and it's typically display flex. Um, you probably wanna do flex wrap, wrap. And that comes in handy when you're on mobile um, so when a div is like you just saw one's a little larger than the other, maybe we go back to three and they'll try to make these fit even though they're a little wide. So the fact that it's wrapping is because of the widths and this container is not um, the same property of this width. I think that should work though, that's funny. 800 pixels divided by three calc you kind of do that mad math but it still doesn't work which is funny because i think of the padding so perhaps let's try that yeah there we go so maybe padding will do um one rim on top and bottom but not on the sides that should give us what we're after so this should work with the percentage as well but i just did that to show you context so that's some preliminary ways to use Flexbox. Um, so on the wrapping mechanism, if you were to kind of go into the mo like a mobile first mode, um, maybe I'll do that on this browser. If you use Flex Wrap, as you can see, um, you can see that this goes and breaks down. So now that they're full width, um, we could go and either just say, if we took this off, that would make it flex still and it would be the full width of the, the container or we could leave it and then stack them like we do on mobile and then maybe on like at media query screen and max width so stuff below uh, 768 pixels we could say maybe do width 100 percent and i need to actually declare this here this is SAS in CodePen, but I'm gonna just do it as regular CSS for now, so it's clear. So now if we set that width, we can kind of overwrite it on mobile to be full width and stacked as opposed to what it would be on desktop. So there's a lot of power there, there with Flexbox. Um, I'm only scratching the surface in this demo, so I just hope it kind of piques your interest. And in the future videos, I'm gonna go through more of the properties like justify content, Kind of explore what each each method or uh, value does. There's space between, space around, um, center, flex in, flex start, stretch, space evenly. There's a ton. So each of these properties has a lot that it offers. Um, I just wanted to kind of give you the census of what Flexbox is and just kind of open the doors to you as uh, it's a great way to build layouts in CSS. So I'll see you in the next videos. Hello HTML and CSS is my new course on HTML and CSS. It's, this is a more comprehensive guide of learning both languages and using them combined to make realistic websites that are professional and useful. Visit hellohtmlcss.com to learn more.